From engraving intricate designs to cutting with pinpoint accuracy, lasers are incredible tools. Out of the different laser types, my favorite is CO2. Their power allows them to cut a wide range of materials, they can both cut and engrave clear acrylic, and are typically enclosed which is great for both safety and venting. Some months ago, Xtool contacted me letting me know they were releasing a new CO2 laser called the P2 and asked if I was interested in testing it out to provide my feedback. After my positive experience with their D1 diode laser, I was really curious to see what their new CO2 laser was capable of and agreed. Well, I've had some time now with this laser and have gotten a chance to run quite a few different engravings and cuts in various materials. So in today's video, we will dive into the Xtool P2. We'll go over the machine's specs, what the setup was like, how it has performed, and I will give you my overall thoughts on the laser based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. The Xtool P2 is a 55 watt CO2 laser with a work area of 600 by 308 millimeters. The motorized Z-axis has a max workpiece height of 64mm with the bottom tray or 71mm without. There is a riser add-on that can be purchased separately to triple that height, but we'll talk about the add-ons a little bit later in this video. The footprint of the machine is 1000mm wide by 639mm deep and 268mm tall. This does not account for the exhaust hose on the back or the height needed to fully open the lid. The outside of the machine is mostly made up of dark gray plastic paneling and a tinted acrylic top, but the internal frame is all metal and very sturdy. This contributes to the weight of the P2, which is 45 kilograms or just shy of 100 pounds. You will definitely need a second set of hands to help with getting the laser out of the box and onto your workbench. For motion, the P2 uses the same type of linear guides with metal wheels and rods used on their diode lasers. These seem to work really well and we've even begun to see them used on 3D printers. There are panels that separate all of the electronics from the inside of the laser and all wires are run through two large cable chains. The bed of the machine is made up of anodized aluminum slats that can be moved around as needed and easily taken out for cleaning. A huge plus of the system is that it allows for the air inside of the laser to move more freely, which helps to remove smoke. There is a water cooling loop built into the machine for cooling the laser tube and air assist. There are two 16 megapixel cameras inside of the P2. One is stationary towards the back of the machine and is used to capture the entire work area. This is then overlaid in the software to allow for easy alignment of designs on your material. The second is mounted on the tool head and can take higher precision images, which comes in handy when engraving on something very small. The cameras also allow for automatic material thickness measuring and even the ability to engrave on curved surfaces. There are two sets of LEDs that both help with the camera images and allow for easier viewing through the acrylic window. On top of the laser is a single large button with a status LED that is used to start a job once it has been sent to the machine. There's also a small screen that tells you if the laser's lid is locked, if the laser is connected, what the water temperature is, and a progress bar during a job. For safety, there is an automatic lock on the laser that will not allow you to open the lid of the laser when a job is running that will automatically unlock as soon as the job has completed, which is not something I've previously seen. There's also an emergency button towards the back right of the machine that will instantly kill the power. I'm glad that they have an emergency stop button on the machine, but its placement in the back right is a little bit awkward. For smoke and fumes, there is one large fan on the back of the machine and an included hose. I had my reservations about how effective it would be, but the relatively sealed chamber and pull of the fan does an excellent job of clearing smoke out of the laser. The included hose is not very long, and unless you're venting right out of a window behind your laser, you'll need to pick up a longer hose. Once you get the machine unboxed and remove the little bit of packaging that's inside of the laser, you'll need to add antifreeze to the laser's water cooling loop. The antifreeze is included, but it requires distilled water to dilute it. The exact ratio of distilled water to antifreeze is dependent on the coolest temperature that it's going to be where you will be using your laser. Filling the reservoir is the easy part, but getting to it does require removing 11 screws, six of them being inside of the laser and five of them being on the back. This seems pretty unnecessary, and for now I have not reinstalled those panel screws. At this point, I did jump in and start using my laser, but I highly recommend that you verify the mirror's alignment before you start sending off jobs. 
There is an official video on this process, but in summary, you'll use the alignment tool under settings in the Xtool Creative Space software. This has you move the laser's head to the front right, apply some painters or masking tape to the laser's path on the tool head, and pulsing the laser. Based on the location of the beam, you'll either be good to go, or in my case, need to make some adjustments to the mirrors to get the beam perfectly centered. This can take a few tries of applying the tape, turning the mirror screw, and pulsing it, but luckily this should only be a one-time deal. The majority of my testing was done using the Xtool Creative Space. You can connect to the P2 over Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or USB-C. I initially tried out the Wi-Fi, but being in the garage was not great for transfer speeds, and I found that the experience was much better, in my case, using USB. The P2 does state that it can be used with Lightburn, and there is even a config file available. I briefly tried it out, and although the laser did connect, some of the behaviors were a bit odd, and it looks like it needs a bit more work. I ended up using Lightburn for all of the design work and then exported the completed vector over to the Xtool Creative Space. So what did I actually do with this laser? Well, lots of testing. Xtool does provide a handful of speed and power recommendations for different materials, but I found them to still need some refinement. I've always been really interested and fascinated by photorealistic engraving, so I spent a lot of time running an engraving, changing a single setting, and repeating the process over and over again to see if I can dial in what would be the best settings. I did learn early on that the air assist on this machine is very powerful. This is a positive for cutting and can even help with engraving, but it caused a few fairly large pieces of material to shift mid-engrave. There are four little spring clamps included with the machine that can be used to secure material, but I found them to be a bit of a pain to attach to the slats. I'm currently still using them, but I will definitely be looking for alternative clamping methods. I exclusively tested image engraving on balsa wood, and after I was happy with the quality, looked into how I could increase the contrast. This led me down quite a rabbit hole, but I ended up going with a mixture of baking soda and just regular tap water. I treated the balsa wood with a few sprays from the spray bottle, and I let it dry before I continued testing. The difference between using the baking soda and water versus not was night and day. The engravings went from a yellowish brown to a very dark black. I'm sure I can still improve on them even further, but I was very, very pleased with these results. During my testing while chatting with my neighbor about the laser, he let me know that he would love to make 30 small cards for the summer camp that he's a part of. The engraving portion was pretty simple, but I did get a chance to do a fair bit of cutting for those 30 cards. The 3mm thick balsa wood at 30mm a second with 100% power and a single pass came out super clean. A few weeks ago after doing a live stream, one of the cameras on a tripod fell over and took out the door on this V0.2. It broke the 3D printed parts and it left a couple of pretty deep scratches on that front panel. Although I was definitely bummed that it happened to both the camera and the printer, I was excited that I was going to be able to test out cutting acrylic for something that I actually needed. I loaded up a sheet of 3mm acrylic downloaded the DXF file from the Voron GitHub repository, and used the recommended settings, which worked beautifully. I also played around a bit with clear acrylic engraving. The engraving results turned out pretty good, but I did notice some white fogging around the cuts and deep etches. Once again, I dove into this and found that it is caused by the off-gassing of the acrylic. There were lots of recommendations for dealing with this, such as various tapes, cleaning agents, types of acrylic, and treating the acrylic with dish soap before engraving. The plan is to do some further experimentation with this to figure out what is going to give me the cleanest results. I cut some MDF out and I even experimented a little bit with leather. This was a first for me and the biggest difficulty I ran into with leather was getting the leather sheet to lay completely flat. I've seen others use double-sided tape to stick the leather down to something more rigid, which I will end up trying. The engraving results in my first few tests turned out much better than I expected, but the cutting proved to be a bit more difficult. For anyone that's interested in working with leather, it is an awesome material, but I'm telling you right now that the smell is absolutely horrible. I will not be doing any more leather engraving or cutting until I've got a longer hose that can completely exhaust the fumes out of the garage. It is not a scent that I will be forgetting anytime soon. The electronics fan and the water cooling pump runs the entire time the machine is on, which does generate a fair bit of noise, but it's still much quieter than most of the other compact CO2 lasers that I've used. The big one is that with the P2, the compressor, which is what generates the most amount of noise, only kicks on and off while a job is running and isn't just on the entire time. 
Everyone will have their own levels of sensitivity, but for me that meant I was able to leave this laser on for longer periods of time versus turning it on instantly while using it and the second it's done just shutting it off. We do need to briefly touch on the add-ons for this laser because there are some that are very unique that expand on this machine's capabilities. Starting off, the P2 is compatible with Xtool's Rotary Attachment 2 Pro. This is a pretty unique roller chuck hybrid that allows you to engrave with just about any cylindrical objects from a small pen to a large tumbler. Then there is a riser base that completely lifts the P2 up, expanding your usable material height from 72 to 215 millimeters. This depth combined with the ability to work with curved surfaces is something that I have not seen combined before. They also have a conveyor feeder, which combined with the risers allows you to work with materials up to 3000 millimeters long by 500 millimeters wide. This uses the laser's pass through and a roller system to feed materials through the front of the laser where it's engraved or cut out and then out the backside of the machine. This is limited to materials that are no thicker than 14 millimeters, but this means that you can work with some really, really large pieces. And in my case, I can cut out full size panels for larger 3D printers, which is just something that I can't do on any of the other compact CO2 lasers out there. Xtool also has a filtration system as well as a fire extinguisher add-on. I do plan on purchasing both the riser as well as that conveyor system, so that's something that we'll hopefully be able to show off and use in a future project. My time so far with the Xtool P2 has been really enjoyable, and I feel like this is a very well thought out machine. One big thing that I can appreciate with Xtool and their machines is that with every release, they seem to constantly be innovating and raising the bar versus so many other manufacturers that are sort of just rinsing and repeating the same formula. The built-in cameras really enhance the user experience and also help with expediting the workflow. My biggest critique so far is that the hose isn't longer than it is, and again, those spring clamps, but that should be a relatively simple fix. The P2 retails at $5,000, which does put it towards the top of the compact CO2 market, but it does have much more tech packed inside of it. With its price and feature set, it really feels like it's targeted towards the Glowforge or prosumer market. To me, this laser makes a lot of sense for a small business or somebody that's planning on getting it and using it to at least recoup the initial machine cost. There is still much more that I would like to test out on this machine, including the curved surfaces, which is something I plan on doing once I've got the risers, so I've got more depth that I can work with. It will likely take me many more months to work my way through the various materials and see how the machine holds up, but I am super excited to see how we can incorporate this into projects and I've already got a few very cool ideas in mind. And that has been the Xtool P2. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any cool project ideas or if there's something specifically that you would like to see tested out on this machine. Also, if you do have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer. And as always, if I don't know the answer to your question, I have no problem reaching out to the manufacturer to try to get that answer for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, there will be links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.